Hi guys, this is Pestilli and welcome to another Escape from Tarkov video. And this video is one of my new player series guide. I'm going to talk about factory, everything you need to know from the extraction, the loot spots, danger areas, and just little tips and tricks to how to be more successful in the factory map. So without further ado, let's crack straight into it. So now I'm loading into the factory map. Previously, there was only six spawn uh, locations within factory. Now it's been buffed up to about 10 different spawn locations. Uh, so previously, the way it was worked is that when you spawn in, you knew exactly where the other five locations were and would be a player at each of them. Now, depending on your server population at the moment, sometimes you'll have a full map and you'll have six people spawning at the same time. Other times you won't. But it's good to know that there's more than six locations now, so you're not always going to get rushed like you were previously. Now, uh, this location is actually noted as... Uh, it used to be called single player spawn. Uh, over here with single player spawn, you would spawn in here... And there's also a spawn down the bottom called Red Light or Red Blinker. Now, there's still spawns. Both these are one down the bottom and over here. I actually don't remember ever seeing someone spawn in here since the changes. But um, you'll spawn over here. And this is actually one of the exits. Now, you need the factory key to open this one. Um, I'll put a link to uh, locations on where you can get the factory keys. There's, there's two spawns on customs as well as um, you can get it from a quest. Otherwise, you can purchase it from the flea market. Um, there is another spawn over here to the left. Um, this spawn is called Barrels. If you do work with squads, uh, it's actually handy to know some callouts. Now, some rules about callouts. I don't know all the callouts for the maps anymore because I haven't really done much uh, duos and trios, etc. for maps. Um, but if you have callouts on maps, it doesn't really matter if you know the callouts uh, that are worldwide known. It just matters what you call them with your mates. Now, if you want to call this one pink, that one over there blue, and this one over here green, as long as your mates know what the callouts are that you guys use, that's all that matters. So, just uh, if you get a nickname for something, then go with it. There's no real um, issue with that. Now, over this side, um, we call this single player side when I used to play it. Um, and, and the reason why it's called single player is because in offline mode, you'd have it spawn there. Now, on this side, you've got the, uh, the weapon crate here. Now, if you do hatch it in, you've got to... Fairly good chance to get an AK uh, that spawns with 30, 30 rounds. There's an ammo box here. Sometimes you can get a PM Makarov. Underneath, there's not too much loot to worry about. Um, it's it's a bit of a dead area now, besides with uh, a bit of PvP. Um, in here, you do have a good spawn for a Packer armor. Uh, spawns on top of here. Spawns quite often. Moving upstairs. Now, you can call whatever you want. Um, these locations whatever you want but a lot of these just call these rafters right anything that's up on the top this is on the rafters um so if you're, they're up on this platform up here you might call that it's like single player rafters um i don't remember the, the call outs for this i would just say it's hot on single player side this is commonly known as stage um there was a trick I'll, I'll test it out and see if you can still do it you can actually only do this on the middle one but if you run jump and crouch at the same time you run you can jump straight through that most people don't actually know about that if you're actually escaping that's a pretty good little uh jump to have uh, this side, you actually need to go under here for a quest for, um, it's called Postman Pat, I'm pretty sure. They get a letter outside the, the scav there. There is a scav spawn there and also a, um, a green crate here. Um, I remember right, there's another green crate up here, but this one's very risky to loot. I don't really stress too much about doing that. Knowing how to do these kind of jumps up here is isn't is pretty handy. Like, for example, if you know people are camping down there, it's, bit, it's a good little thing to be able to jump up there. Now, there is a spawn in the middle here. Uh, I just call that mid spawn if I, that was me. Um, this is probably one of the more annoying spawns you get, but you get, it gives you the option at least. Um, there are players that spawn on this side, so if you do run out straight away, you can try and fight them. It's very common though; people run straight to here, and so if you spawn on either of these side uh, spawns, you know that generally a lot of people come up here. So I would almost advise against it. Um, you can go up onto the rafters and go for the high ground. It's it's totally up to you. Generally, I try to avoid uh, sticking around the middle too much. It 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 generally leads to bad decisions. Uh, if you come in here, weapon crate here. I'll go through the bathroom in a minute. Let's go straight to the top. Now on the top side, uh, also, sorry guys, there's, there's some weapon crates there to loot as well. Now if you're on the top side, this shelf can have some really rare loot. Uh, Tetrises, gunpowders, a lot of really cool stuff. As well as this shelf here. Uh, Bitcoin spawn right in that corner, right there. So it's a good little spot to know. Now this is the safe that everyone seems to want to hatch it to. Um, personally, I don't know the, the big fuss about it. Got your two filing cabinets, two jackets. And also the safe. Um, it's handy to know. Uh, you can get some uh, stuff from there. The breach door here. Not really a lot spawns in here. But you do need to be able to go in here for a quest. At, at Sometimes you do get ammo in here. Sometimes you can get a bugged out gun through the wall here. Oh, also, I've seen SV-98s and random guns spawn in here. 
Uh, sometimes you get a random gun spawn in here, but you actually do need a factory key to open up here. Uh, if you sometimes can loot it through the wall if it still happens, but um, sometimes you can get guns to spawn on this shelf. Uh, sometimes car batteries on the on the, the seat there. If you do get a car battery, it trades for a Mosin at the moment. So it's Mosin. If you get stuck in this hallway, right? If you're in a fight, one person's up the other end, and you're at this end. It's a very 50-50 fight. Personally, I've found from my experiences, people on the other end win the fight more often. Um, I think it's something to do with the following cabinet works as a shield. So you actually got a, an easier chance of um, coming across with the peak and being able to shoot. Uh, other people on the other side generally get smacked around a lot more. Uh, and personally, I found that it's a lot harder um, to win the fight from this end. Just my opinion. Everyone will probably have their own on that one. Um, overpass, call it whatever you want. Uh, I've called it overpass, and this middle area is stripper. I'll move on to that one in a second. Uh, and the reason why it's stripper is because it's like a going up the stripper pole. We go down here uh, into the bathroom. Now, there's uh, first aid kits that spawn here, car first aid kits. The east, sorry, the west 36 key spawns right here. Definitely worth checking that out. It's worth two or 300,000 rubles, so if you do run into the bathroom, um, but you do need it for a quest from uh, therapist, so it's a handy one to have. Uh, gun spawn here. There's gun, ammo, meds all spawn on this spot here. Get an AK-74N with ammo in it. You can use that one. I think an, an M4 spawns there, but it's not as often. Moving over to this side, uh, coming down, there's not really much to stress about at the bottom. Generally, you, you won't see it often, but sometimes people hide under there. I think it's a stupid place to hide. You've got nowhere to retreat to. Uh, outside here, MBSS backpack all the time and also barter items like sometimes very rarely car batteries and but you get a lot of wrenches and and uh, cigarette packets and stuff like that. Go across the top, um, you can come out here on the rafters. Uh, a lot of people, actually this isn't a bad spot if you want to be a little bit cheesy. It doesn't work all the time but uh, people lay prone here and then they wait for, um, it's probably about here. Wait for people to come through the doorway and slot them. It actually works quite well. Um, if you've got a Mosin, uh, I don't know. I haven't tested it, but maybe if you need to get those 15 meter kills, that'd probably be close to 15 meters. Maybe. So you could probably lay there and try and get someone who's just coming through the doorway there. Um, and you can get the shot off because if you see it from this side, there's not really, like, even if you are looking for it, like, it's still, you're overexposed heaps. Um, and they've got the easy shot. Um, but obviously, it's. You're a lot more uh, prone to people on the other side. Moving out here, uh, you get a 3M armor spawn in here. There is also a 3M armor spawn in the office. I forgot to say about that on top of the filing cabinets. 3M armors are used for one of the first skier tasks. So if you're trying to farm 3M armors, um, you can get them from, from over there. Um, there is an MBS backpack that spawns on, on there. So if you're after a backpack, um, this isn't the worst place to, uh, to fight from. I do see sometimes people laying down prone on the top of these uh, silos. I actually think that's probably one of the better places to hide because if you once you take the shot off and they're trying to figure out where you are, if they miss, if you miss and they survive, you've got plenty of places to choose to run down. Um, so moving down, stripper. You've got the jacket here. You've got two weapon crates here for our uh, ammo and, and and pistols and stuff like that. Just on the other side of this, the three M armor spawn on top of here. Which is quite handy to know about, um, particularly for those skier tasks early. Moving over here, I don't really recommend looting this box ever. Even if you do kill all the players, the scavs can still spawn. Uh, just remember there is a six player limit um, to the map. So six PMCs will spawn in, including yourself. If you do kill the other five PMCs or you do notice that all the bodies are on the ground, player scavs can still spawn in. So just be wary of that. Now this is called the pumping station. I don't have the actual key on me. Um, it's meant to be used for the GM counter, not GM counters. The gas analyzers uh, for the for the uh, therapist quest. It's not really a good spot for gas analyzers. Uh, interchanges for that, but uh, you can't go in there and get a heap of uh, bleaches and random shit like that. The co the key spawn for um, the public station is back here. I'll quickly show it. it doesn't take long to get to it. Um, but yeah, so generally scabs will spawn in this map for about 15 minutes. If you come in with a squad. You can actually farm them. The to the, the public station key. It's on one of these sides, left or right. You'll spot it. it spots really easy to find. Um, and so another thing to note: if you do want to farm scavs in here, if you come in with a, a group of five of you, there's only one other PMC. So as long as that one other PMC doesn't kill you all, uh, and you work together, kill the other PMC, you can farm the scavs without any worry about um, any other players coming here. Besides, obviously, player scavs. Um, there is a spawn right here. I don't know why people spawn here and then go straight for the loot box. Maybe 
you might get a gun rarely sometimes overall i find that anyone who actually just spawn in here and loots this box um there's a spawn just here and there's also one at the other end of the hallway now very commonly i i rush down this way at the start of my maps and i'll catch people still looting that box so i don't really think that's the best option personally uh personal preference up to you guys moving over to the other side of this map uh this is forklift side the reason for it there's a forklift right here uh and we've always just called this forklift now originally the spawn spawn used to be like right here i can't even remember now um and there was another spawn right here however this is all changed now there is still a spawn right here on this side um over this side as you know that wasn't the right there was a spawn over here and then the other spawn was over here and this room is called breach so this is the one of the doors in the game where you have to breach uh to open there's not a lot of them so yeah this is a breach area uh and that's forklift now the spawn is now changed to that side just there and there's also a spawn all the way back here. Now, personally, if you spawn in this location here, guys, I think you spawn about here, and you're always facing the wrong way, if I remember right. It's fucking annoying. Um, get the hell out of this area as quickly as possible. Even if you just come down here, there might be a guy in the hallway down there, but you want to get out of that. Because if you get stuck in that room, you have no exit besides them camping you. Um, at least if you're here, if someone's pushing down the hallway, you can have a shot and then run. You can go down, you can go left, you can go out the door. It's giving you options. This, this game is very quick-paced, particularly on Factory. Um, and you need to be ready for that. Um, it, the combat side is what is quick paced. The other side can be quite slow. But once you get into a fight, you need to be thinking smart and quickly. So take that into account. You want to get out of that room quickly and move over uh, out here. Uh, besides that, there is a key. It's called the um, it's called the power station key. Uh, it spawns, I think, on the shelf right there. If it's not that shelf, it's this one. Uh, that's for an interchange. It's the two jackets there. The power station key is not a big one. doesn't really do a lot. Uh, this key, door right here, you need the factory key. Uh, go down and link below to get the location for the factory key. Um, and then that's another extract there. The other spot I'll show you quickly down this way um, is another spawn. Now, scavs do spawn throughout this map. One of the common spawns if you're trying to hunt down scavs is that location right there. And they walk up and down this ramp a lot. So if you're trying to hunt down scavs, it's good to always check these tunnels. They do spawn quite often. There is a spawn right here in the, in the, uh, in the tunnels. And... I rush it pretty much every time as I play. If I spawn on the other side of the map, I'll quickly check this one. Uh, if I spawn over at Forklift, I'll come out around the uh, top here and I'll check this one. Even though you, you don't know where it, all the spawns are for people at all times, it's still a good idea if you're playing aggressive to get those spawns quickly. Because if you do catch someone out there, um, just like I was talking about that back room at the very back corner, it's good to try and limit the amount of uh, ways that people can escape uh, so you can get the aggression on them and win the fight. Pretty much for the rest of this map, there's not a lot to it. Um, there's the uh, main exit here. You can exit straight out to the main entrance, or main exit here. Now, this one is particularly early wipe, is camp as heaven. Um, people will sit in like this corner here. They'll lay prone here, so when you open the first door, they'll shoot you. Um, there is so many people that try and camp this, because early on after a wipe, there is not many um, factory keys in the game. so. Uh, once you do have a factory key, I nearly always suggest going to a different extract. But besides that, guys, I'll show you a couple of little tips and tricks that uh, might come in handy. This right here, this wire, um, you can just jump straight over it. You don't have to um, worry about going around it. If you do need to escape, there is a weapon box here. Um, another thing you can do if you're on the other side here, if you don't want to take damage against the wire, you can run around here. You can jump straight up onto this, jump straight over that. It's a nice, quick, and easy way to get away from people. If you are out of position on a fight, get away, regroup, and, and rethink about what you're doing. You don't have to uh, commit to a fight unless you're cornered, so make sure you play smart, and uh, hopefully this will help you survive a lot more. Now, while I'm up here, I'll quickly will show you where that 3M armor spawns. On top of the firing cabinets, right there, there's the 3M armor. So guys, to finish up the actual guide, um, I'm just going to say there's... I've done a few factory school videos for talking about how I play factory and why I play in certain ways. Um, I've also got 
uh, why I died videos. I used to do a, a few videos on Factory in particular because I used to just live in Factory. As well as that, I know Veritas does a lot of uh, in-depth guides on how to improve your gameplay and analyzing uh, his mistakes he makes. He's a very uh, high-tier player when it comes to Factory and he plays very aggressive like myself. So it's important that to make sure um, play within your limits. If you are learning, don't Go in with your best gear every time. I actually highly suggest that if you are going into a raid with your best gear, bring a mate or two, so at least you've got a higher chance of actually surviving with that gear. If you're going in by yourself and you're using your top tier gear on a map like Factory, um, and you've got someone who's quite good playing in the, in the game, 90% of the time, if they know the positions around Factory, they know how to use the sound cues, they will beat you. Uh, it's, it's a game that does take time and practice to get good at, and I just suggest that um, improve, learn the maps, and hopefully this guide gave you some help. So guys, that's it for this video. This is the first of my map guides. I'm going to have one for every map, particularly aimed at new players. I know some of this stuff might be very basic, but I want to try and help you guys out in learning the maps as much as possible. Uh, Factory is quite a small map. It's quite a handy map to learn if you just want to go in to get a scav kill or two, get a little bit of a loadout so you can use that as guns and gear on a different map. I'm going to be adding all these videos to a playlist at a, a, titled the New Player Guide Playlist. And then that way, if you have a mate that joins the game, give them the playlist and they can actually start learning all the different things that they like for each map, loadouts, basic little things. I've got plenty of these guys to come. I'm going to try and punch out one a day for the next week so they can get all the maps done, a couple of the basic stuff uh, like the flea market, uh, different modding tips and stuff like that. So guys, thanks for watching another video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for future content. I stream on Twitch six days a week. Go down the link below. Give me a follow there. If you've got any Tarkov questions, feel free to hit me on my live stream or down in the comments below. And lastly, I'll see you next time.